Steven! Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, today's video, I'm gonna show you guys my 60 card scare claw deck. I entered the YCS with this, and if I played not like a fucking idiot, I would have won, I would have popped easily. Could have got 9 0. Uh, the deck's absolutely insane. So, if you're gonna play a deck this format, this is it. It claps up Kushtira, claps up Runic, whatever. I OTK'd 8 interruption Runic for higher sprite in the YCS. They drew like 11 times, and I OTK'd it with zero hand traps. The deck is just unbelievable. And it's very similar to my top eight YCS Brazil deck, but without, instead of tier limits, uh, I played Kushtira. Okay. It, it's really, really good. Okay, Steven, I'm excited to see this deck. Let's get started, so we're bro. Let's straight into it. Let's go. Also, be the first time on the channel, make sure to smash the subscribe button. I want to give a big shout out to Sam, who is uh, filming for us. Also, subscribe let's to Sam. It. Let's do it, baby. So let's do it. So this is really focused on the Scareclaw engine. Manadium, Manadome, whatever. The whole deck does what Scareclaw, like the whole point of it is the Scareclaws. So it's a huge engine is the Scareclaws, and it's the most important part of the deck. So I'm playing, there's about 35 ways to get into the Scare Claw combo. These level three shitters that people used to think are is ass, they're actually really good. I like to play even more. It just so happened that five was just the only space I had left to put in the deck. Otherwise, I'd play six or seven. Yes. Now, the reason why this deck is so powerful is simply because you play eight ways to Fenrir, and Fenrir gets into the whole Scare Claw combo. So the idea is that you go into Fenrir right away, your opponent thinks that you, they have to stop this right away or they die, yes. which is true. They could stop it now or stop it later, they're dead regardless. This search is this, and you purposely get this to the graveyard, and then you summon this. And mm -hmm. then you get into your whole Scareclaw combo via Scareclaw Kashtira. And the idea of the deck is the rest of the deck right here. So if we do the math, so with the exception of the Kashtira cards, so it's about this. Even the Fenrir, even the one Fenrir. So you got, for, no, forget the Fenrir. You have what, 10? There's about 14. There's about 14 one-card Scareclaw cards. The other, there's a 60 card deck. The other 46 are made to stop your opponent's cards and interruptions. If you stop all your opponent's interruptions and the last card in your hand is a Scareclaw, that's Axis Cold Talker plus Vicious Astrolaud, which is 8,800, 8,300 damage plus pop four cards in the field. So that's it's crazy. an OTK. That's so crazy. the idea is that with the five cards in your hand, you bait all interruptions your opponent has, and your last normal summon is this shitter that people think sucks. You just normal summon this Scareclaw and you destroy them. And the, the deck has access to every single Charmer, so you get the access code so easily. 14 ways to one card Zeus your opponent against Kashtira. So if they end in a Rise Heart, plus pass, they're dead without question. It's one interruption, and that's a joke. But if they go on the Shango Law to end up with like three, four interrupt, three interruptions, then you just summon your Fenrir, you don't even do anything. You just go into your own Rise Heart. I don't know XYZ. I play a Rise Heart and Zeus just for them. And you play Talents and Econ in the deck as well. So you take their cards. And you Zeus them, and then wait, with wait, five cards you kill wait, them. Wait, uh, Arise or if Shango Law activated this effect is turned, you can overlay for right? Exactly. That's Even crazy. the opponent. So the opponent goes Shango Law, they think they're nice, they have four monsters on the board. Little do they know, they're about to have zero in main phase two when you Zeus their ass. <laughs> yeah. And a huge part of the deck is Brave. Now, no one understands. People just stop playing Brave. Brave is the best engine in Yu-Gi-Oh. I can't stress this enough. Yeah, bro. Like, this is crazy. Like, what, tell what? me right now, what does one right ever mean? Like, bro, no, every board right now gets cooked to one right ever miss here. Yeah, it's true. Every it's true. single board. What are you gonna do? Cosmic Cycle, my faithful? All right, you just want neg one. I have one monster for free on the field, and then I'm gonna destroy another one of your monsters. Yeah. It's unreal what this card does. It's so powerful. And the thought of having multiple doesn't matter, because if you go right and then special enchantress, use the enchantress as a combo piece. And because it's a spellcaster, yeah. you get to your, you need it for Selene. Yeah. Selene slash Pendulum is the best deck in the game. Yes. So you need to make sure you have access to Selene, which is why we play the spellcasters to get that. And what is the FTK? Think of the most, the what's the best card in the game to combo with this? Magician Souls. So on top of that, Every single one of these cards have field spells. So yes. Magician Souls become a god card in this deck, plus with the Enchantress. Yes. And the idea of the deck is you, you end up always about six interruptions, about three of which is from the actual combo, but you played about 26 defensive cards. So you also end on a bunch of defensive cards like Griffin, Fenrir, uh, and then all the defensive cards you play, which I'll show you as you get to, and you just break board going second. So as for the field spell engines we play, we play nine in total, seven field spells plus terraforming set rotation. Set rotation, I try and keep as like a cosmic cycle for field spell decks. Also, it's really good with Draco back. And the idea of the deck is that you have eight ways to Fenrir. So going second, you have eight ways to Zeus right away to cook Kushtira. But then you also, on top of that, you have four ways to get the Vice of Star Frost plus your actual Vice of Star Frost and Scare Claws. Yes. Plus, you have two of these. Now, you need to play two of these. A lot of decks play one Reich Phobia. Reich Phobia is ridiculous. You need to play two because you have the second for free, and that's your follow-up. So typically, you end with five cards in hand for that. Wow. Next, we play the Brave Package. I don't play Foolish because I try. I, I main deck D-Shifter, so I don't try. I don't play cards that lose to that. Souls is the only card that loses to D-Shifter. Wait, so, wait, so your opponent doesn't lose to Shifter? No, I, I when they Shifter me, I'm like, thanks, buddy. You have five cards in hand. You're about to get clapped up. I play Shifter myself, so it's a fantastic way to be able to build your deck to not lose to that, which is why we're not playing Foolish Burial. It's also why we're not playing Preparation of Rights. 
But in order to make sure, like, it, if you see how many, there's a lot of engines in the deck. Yes. So, wow, yo, these TSX1 sleeves are insane. Thank wow, you, bro. They're, Thank they're you. crazy. Thank you guys you, should bro. check Thank them out, tsx1.com. Thank you. And Small World gets to the whole deck. Now, because Small World gets to the whole deck, Souls, now look, yes, you are negging one, but Souls is plusing too. So, it's okay. A lot of the times, my Small World gets to Souls, but it doesn't lose the G-Shifter. So, you're able to get to whatever you want. Fenrir is a defensive card. Enchantress. So, you're really playing like 10 of these or yeah. 7 of these, and it doesn't actually break. Is every card in your deck like aligned to Small World? Every single Everything. card, of the, and it's all because of Illusion of Chaos. Somehow, Illusion of Chaos just links to Enchantress and Fenrir, and is a dart. So somehow, the all four engines of the deck just all go with Illusion of Chaos, bro. But without adding bonus bro, cards, bro. So you know all the lines for this? Yeah, off the top of my head. That's crazy, bro. I went to school for math, bro. This card gives you a headache, man. Uh, it does. That's why you have to go, go to school for math, like me. Uh, <laughs> but but, uh, but I, I dropped out because I sucked. But uh, it's okay. so, uh, all right. Uh, so yeah, I dropped out to be a Yu-Gi-Oh player. You already know what it is. Two scared claw cards. One, you need to play Twin Song. No one knows what this card does. What this is, card what is, is this? FTK. Let me read the last line of this card. The last line. If you play any deck that's not branded, you lose. That's what it says. Do you read it in the fine print? That's okay. What it says. <laughs> Oh, it does say that. Yeah, it does say that, exactly. Yeah. So it says that your opponent cannot activate link effects for the rest of this turn. All you need is a link three. So your turn, you end with five cards in hand. You resolve both of these on your turn one. You resolve two Lightheart and two Tryheart. Tryheart's not once per turn either, and neither is this. So you get plus, 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 and then a link three. For the Baguska effect, sure, I don't care about this. It's a link three. Your opponent card, you can't just get Zeus, whatever, you plus five. But then you go Twin Saw, popping your level three. And what Twin Saw will do, because you have a link three, right away, you banish this. Your opponent's link effects are negated for the they cannot even be activated they're not just negated they can't even be activated that's crazy every runic deck is absolutely destroyed nice live twin cards you suck nice marincess cards you extra suck nice dragon link deck your striker dragon does nothing every single deck in the game dies except brandon and gashtir which you just slap up anyways what's up ash blossom yes. so it's very easy to destroy every other deck <laughs> on top of that it says pop two so not only is it a floodgate but it's a pop two so scarecrow arrival is never the first card i search never Never. So many people playing Scareclaw wrong. This card literally says FTK on its own. So the idea of the deck is very control based. The rest of these are all defensive cards. You play about 30 defense plus 35, 40 defensive cards. So you, the idea is that you get the twin saw, set that up, and then the fault get as much as plus possible with both Lightheart and Tryheart. So you resolve Tryheart twice, you resolve Lightheart twice, and you end with five cards in your hand. And this plus all the hand traps, plus the Griffin, plus the Fenrir, your opponent's not playing, your opponent's cooked, and they just die, obviously. Wow. Uh, now for the defensive card. So uh, plus the small world. So we uh, plus the small world. Now we play eight ways to Fenrir. Fenrir is a defensive card. It's not the main part of the combo. I consider Enchantress part of the combo. So I won't consider Enchantress a defensive card. But with Fenrir, which is that we have eight of them, there's literally 30. You're playing a CC card deck. Half the deck is defensive cards. That's why it's so powerful. And it's all one card engines. Small world. So now that I know I brought it up. I'm bringing it up because of this one card we're putting in here. And that is... Uh, Kurikara Dream Incarnate, which this card obliterates the entire meta. If I know I have Small World or Kurikara going second, I let my opponent negate all my stuff. Nice Kashtira board. Anyways, it's an 8,000 attack. Enter Battle Phase. Yeah, that's how crazy this card is. Wow. Same with a bunch of different, basically every single thing in the meta game right now. So you just play one of this. So this is why I'm considering Small World a defensive card, but it gets to this. It also gets to Fenrir, which is another defensive card. Mm. Uh, Talents, which is just so crazy. You just need to play it. I don't care. I play three Econ as well. The reason I play this... The card says this. The card says, nice board, it's mine now. That's why I play them. And on top of that, Econ makes your effects resolve. Just Light Heart and, and Right Heart get negated so much, right? Obviously, yes. it's a summon effect. Chain Econ, it resolves. I take your Fenrir. Thanks. Fenrir effect, get absolutely cooked. When I was playing the YCS, now, don't get me wrong, I could have gone XO. I played like an absolute moron. I could have gone XO. And I'm, 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 uh, What's it called? We don't play for a while, and you, you like you're, 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 rusty. you're rusty. rusty as shit. It's okay, but I'm still the best player in the game. Speaking of rusty, this is kind of like a fast forward. I'm gonna play Rusty Bardish in this deck. No cap. How? Because uh, everything you get easily get the three darks. You just go dark, and then uh, any dark, and you get two fog blades for free. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> that's a little uh, foreshadow for my Nats deck. Anyways, okay, so in Scareclaw. Uh, okay, so, uh, so yeah, the idea of it was I was trying to bring up something. Uh, yeah, okay, so you want you play with the eight ways to play Fenrir and six steel cards. That's 14 steel cards. So now you got your Fenrir Zeusing every single time. I have Zeus in here and Fenrir. Or sorry, and a Rice Heart. I don't hard make these ever, ever. Well, aside from this with my opponent's cards. I make these with my opponent's cards. Yeah. That's why they're there. This, okay, I guess with my Fenrir, but because of my opponent's effects. These are there because of my opponent's cards in my extra deck. Mm -hmm. Nice Rice Heart, it's Sam's. 
<laughs> and that's why they're so crazy. Also, every single deck that ends on an XYZ is getting cooked. Mm. And all your cards resolve. I can't, and no one expects who's playing around Econ. No one on God's Green Earth. Yeah. That's why it comes up so well. And if you, you know, the rest of the cards are hand traps. But if you put in a hand trap over Econ or Talents, what's it really doing? Exactly. Uh, like Unless you're playing Branded, Ash Blossom, sure. I mean, I'm putting in Ash Blossom in here, but the cards we're playing is 3D Shifter. Damn, three crazy. Nibiru, three Imperm, three Ash. The, like, look, they're not that great. These are the reason Imperm's there is it's a defensive card going second, but it's, it's also a hand trap. Now, Ash should be Droll. So consider Ash a Droll, okay? No, no, so, no, 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 I can't cut this. No, no. You Brand think Ash your main Ash? Yes, yes, yes. yes I yes. think Branded sucks. No, 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 no. I no, no, think Branded. Branded is too good. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened with Branded. No, 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 Branded. Dude, every time good. I play Branded, you guys don't know what happens. Every time I play Branded, they look into my eyes. And I look into their soul, and I say, "You're not gonna draw Branded Fusion. Your deck sucks." And they don't open Branded Fusion, <laughs> so that's just what happens. Uh, so I don't need Ash, but it's here anyways. If you want to, if you don't get that same luck as I did, you can put Droll instead. But uh, cards that are for the matchups that aren't the Biru is a hand trap that right now no one's playing around, and the Biru is so powerful it gets rid of the entire board, and no one's playing around it, which is why it's so powerful. If people are playing around it, it's dog shit, and if they end on a Rise Heart Pass, they're dying. So it's irrelevant against that deck. Now, post side deck, it's very important. You have to think of your siding patterns. Post side deck, I have 21 cards that FDK every single runic variant in Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I have 20, uh, the 14 steel, 17, the 14 steel cards plus three thrust, 17 cards that absolutely FDK cash the era. Mm -hmm. And then branded just gets FDK'd by any single hand they draw because they suck. So I just beat destroy every deck. <laughs> That's the main deck. It's incredible. Uh, 60? 60. Would you, uh, you could put 19 hand traps if you want by removing the, the thing. I just find Econ and Talents are so good with Kashtira, and despite Kashtira sucking balls, people still play it. So you need to have an answer to that. So if you look at these small world, if you don't, if you play all hand traps, I guess you, if you want, you can cut these. But like these are these are 22 defensive cards in total that you could play anything you want for. Small world going into this is too powerful. But if you don't like hand trap, I mean, it could also get your entire engine as well. So you can play 19 hand traps if you want, but these are, in my opinion, the strongest defensive cards. Ash is an FTK against Labyrinth and Branded, but against everything else, I side that out, and Runic. So against Runic, Branded, and Labyrinth, Ash stays, everything else, it gets removed. Could you, um, could you stem this deck to 40 or no? Yeah, yeah, my original build is 40. The reason why this deck is not good at 40 is because you play four different engines, and the way this is deck is an FTK is when you draw one of each engine and two hand traps. That is, doesn't, well, that's not gonna happen all the time, but if you open one, like, if you open one Enchantress, you open one Scarecrow, one Kashtira. It's game over. I don't even need souls. If you open souls, there's four <laughs> engines. Open three of the four engines, open a brick and two hand traps, the game's over. So what that's the idea wow. of it. That's crazy. And, uh, or just a defensive card. Econ breaks any board, talents breaks any board. The reason why is you not only stop the interruption that's interrupting you, but you take it for yourself. Mm. When you take it for yourself, you then use that effect of the opponent. You take a Vista of the Spatter and you special their Vice of Star Frost and go into your combo. Mm. So you use their cards to for you. And the beauty of talents and econ are they're both good going first as well. Amazing. So now that's why I don't play the dark ruler either. And there's dark ruler I think is a little bit overrated. A lot of decks are think should think about dark ruler on their end board. It's not like if you go dark ruler, then what happens? All right, then you got to deal with their three defensive cards yes. and their trap card that they have that they searched in their combo. You still have to deal with three four interruptions, mm -hmm. and you still have to clear the board. It doesn't actually do anything. You can't kill them. My goal is to kill them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's mostly when I go second, they, they're dead. The side deck, well, before we go into the main deck, it's very specific. So the hand traps that I play are, so three bell, three mortar, three drolls in the side. I just don't have them right now. So three droll as well. Three thrust, regeki duster, and scrape off splash. This negates the spell or trap going south, negates anything, you just put this in going first, but you still, for any link deck, you go for this, but you still have access to this in case you have no griffin. Mm -hmm. If you have no griffin, you get this all the time, or baron. And the reason why you play one regeki, one duster, is thrust searches them. A lot of the times, thrust wants to search regeki instead of Dark Ruler, Duster, whatever. So these are just there as cards that are searchable by Thrust going second. So you basically have four Duster, four Regeki. And a lot of the times Regeki is the card you want to get. It is non-ironically very powerful right now. So that's why you play that. Mm -hmm. And then three Droll, three Bell, three Mourner. And it just perfect side ratio. So you have about, uh, right now in the main deck, there's 30 defensive cards. But post side deck, it's about 36 defensive cards that are very good against every single matchup. Have you ever drawn all hand traps before? Uh, yeah, and then I top deck uh, Scarecrow. Oh, oh, wow. That's <laughs> uh, now for the links. So it's a link deck. It's uh, all links. 
So the reason why they're so powerful is not because of the engines, despite the engines being insane. It's the these Scareclaw is the best engine that puts monsters on board because it has access to Dark and Alsa, which just so happens to be the only like attributes that matter this format. So you go two light heart, two try heart. You try and go into both the all four turn one. Three light heart and a third right phobia is an option, but this is good enough because you don't want to really open the right phobia, but it's still good for grinding. But these this is all you need here. You go into these turn one, and then going second. You just use these as baits. You don't really go into this too much going second, but maybe sometimes. This is the, by far the MVPs of the deck. So the idea is because you're playing four Magician Souls, you're playing 10 Enchanters, you're playing uh, small, well, you have like 15 ways to spellcasters. So the idea is you use one of these, you take their Fenrir, you take their right cart, you take their Brandon Dark to help you, their high attack monster, you destroy their board, and you take their Arise Heart. And then with the Toke, everything is Earth in this deck, all scared, they're all Earth and Dark. Uh, even the token of, of Enchantress is an Earth, uh, plus all the scare claws are Earth or Dark, so you, you just choose freely. So typically you'll take their Arise Heart, you'll then with the link with your token, keep Griffin, who gives a shit, you already win. Then you take their Fenrir, use Fenrir's effect, and then you keep playing, get free materials under your Arise Heart, slap a 17 material Zeus. Like, they're so good, it's unreal. And because the whole deck gets access to them is why they're so powerful. Mm -hmm. And because you play 15 Spellcasters, so remember, any scare claw, any scare claw is a Dark or an Earth. So going second, that's the idea of it. And then you go into the Selene, which because you play 15 Spellcasters, a pen best deck, and then you go into <laughs> your choice of access code, or if you're trying to play a simplified game state, Apollosa. I do not end an Apollosa or Baron turn one. I don't care about negates turn one. Sometimes I'll go for Baron turn one if I don't have a negate set up, but when you have 20 defensive cards and you just set up plus six cards in hand with these, you put this here, you put tri uh, the trap card, and then your, your Griffin or Fenrir and like 20 defensive cards. It's all you need because you have five cards in hand. Mm -hmm. Because you, you add, you add, you add, you add, and you just can't lose because of the trap. And then you kill them the next turn. Wow. So Droll literally is your here. You oh lose. yeah, hard lose to Droll. You better <laughs> have it. Yeah, yeah. I, I main deck shifter just so I don't get Droll. That's how badly Droll destroys this deck. Damn, that's crazy. And uh, yeah, and uh, the deck is Axis Code Turbo going second. That's the whole point of it. And if you look at the attributes, you you, choose, you pick and choose the attributes you want. You know you're going to have a light. You know you're going to have a dark. And I try to go out of my way to Ausa instead of dark. So that way I know that my access code is popping three times. And then, because you're going second, you also go into the Vicious Astrolite at the very end, popping four times, and this gains attack. So typically, this would be like 4,000 attack. This would be 50. This is what, 9,300 attack. And you pop four times. One, two, three, four. Plus, on top of that, Reich Phobia, the field spell, also pops. So going second, that's the game plan. You save all this stuff, you get right phobia the field spell, you pop five times and you kill them with these two. That's crazy. And if they don't have any card to summon, or if you don't open one of your spellcasters, uh, the last link to, to do that, so you basically play three charmers is cross sheep. Because underneath the cross sheet, you put Vish summon Vicious Astrolite on your cross sheet, you reborn. And, and then you reborn a card, and then you go into the combo uh, to make access code. So you essentially play three link twos that lead to a link three, which then, thanks to the best card in the game, leads to a link four. So it's really Axico Talker uh, Turbo going second, which is why this is why I OTK'd eight interruption runic for higher sprite. They drew 11 times and I OTK'd. At the end of the OTK, he had to look at my graveyard and think, are you locked into anything? Because he was astounded that that was even humanly possible. And when you have a scare claw, anything's possible. Anything's possible with one scare claw. That's anything. anything. One scare claw equals that uh, five pop, uh, 9,000 attack damage. So wow. uh, one Baron to floor, and then one Arise Heart, one Zeus. This is, like I said, just a steal. And this is all you need. And then I play the 15th card is Nightmare Phoenix. You never make this. It could be a Donner to trigger Fenrir at times from your hand. But the reason why I play Nightmare Phoenix is the deck does get hurt to anti-spell. So, but it does put monsters in the field. So the Nightmare Phoenix is strictly for post side. This deck has a lot of extra deck space. Uh, if, if you don't take play the steel cards, you don't really need to play these three. So these three are actually like yeah, I never even make Apollosa either, but it's still there for for game states that are defensive. It's Scareclaw Turbo, so you can put any three you like in here. But these come up the most because these uh, fourteen steel cards that you you will not lose a single game against Christira. Mm -hmm. Maybe a single game if you feel like playing on hard mode to reverse sweep them. So you you literally tell them, <laughs> I scoop, but your, your deck's the best, you win game one, and then you do a obl obliterate them game two and game three, just to give them a little happiness when they go back home. Uh, <laughs> so that's the only way you'll lose a single game. Uh, and then there's everything else. So you don't want to lose the bullshit, so that's what the Nightmare Phoenix is. And if you look at the entire main deck, there's so many defensive cards. Like we're talking about Fenrir pops a card, like face up card, so it gets rid of like Enchantress, Draco back gets rid of a card. Uh, every single scare claw gets the right phobia, gets rid of a card. 
Every single card in the deck is a defensive card, but also a combo card. Mm. That's why going second is so good. You're OTKing. Mm. That's why it just so, so, it feels so good to play it so free, which is why I love Brave, Scareclaw, Souls, insert every engine in Yu-Gi-Oh! is because those are not just go first cards, but go second cards at the same time. So that's the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The deck's incredible. Uh, I will not be going to Nats because I'll be busy streaming every single day. Uh, but if I make a change of heart to go to Nats, I will be playing this. Guys, Steven will uh, be streaming Nats, Nats recap too. I will, I will. You'll be, be live streaming and commentating too. I will be. Because be. you're the best commentator. Ah, uh, thanks, thanks. thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'm also the best Yu-Gi-Oh player. So you guys are fucking lucky if I don't go to Nats, I'm gonna easily win. You guys so, uh, I wanna go so bad, but I can't. We'll have to see. But if I do go, I'll be playing this deck with Rusty Bardiche in my deck. Because that card's crazy. That's a foreshadow, you guys are getting that deck list. All right, peace. <laughs>